What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here with your second stimulus check update. And boy, do we have good news for you. If you didn't see my previous video earlier today, they have announced a second stimulus package with stimulus checks and unemployment extension and all sorts of good things in there. I'm gonna give you all the details of it. We're gonna actually go into the bill and read the bill in this video so you guys can understand exactly what is going to come in the near future. But first, if you haven't yet, click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. This way you won't miss out on second stimulus check, unemployment extension, and related news updates as we get the information. My wife and I do all the research for you every single day so we can bring you all the information in a quick, concise video. And don't forget to smash the like button for us down below. It really helps out our channel. And I have really, really good news for you. There's wording in this bill that says you actually might receive a second stimulus check and a further extension of unemployment next year. So that would be a third stimulus check. You would be a second stimulus check now and a third stimulus check next year. I will give you all the details of that in this video. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss out on that. Okay, so first up, this bill proposal has been released by the Problem Solvers Caucus, which is a group from the U.S. House of Representatives lawmakers that is split into 48 to 50 U.S. House representatives, half of them being Republicans and half of them being Democrats. So there's 50 of them when they're all there. If somebody's missing or out sick or something like that, then they sometimes go down to 48. But we'll just say that there's 50 of them. So 25 Democrats, 25 Republicans. And they have been working for the last couple weeks on a new bill that we hope will pass both the House and the Senate to get you guys another stimulus checks, an unemployment extension update, and also money for small business owners through the PPP program, the Paycheck Protection Program, that helps small businesses not go out of business and pay the paychecks to their employees to prevent people from losing their job during this pandemic. So we are going to now go over the details of this bill proposal from the Problem Solvers Caucus, which are members of the U.S. House of Representatives. This is a bipartisan bill, so that means there's both Republicans and Democrats, 25 of each from the House, that have drafted this bill, and they already have support from both sides, the Democrats and the Republicans in the House. So they have made this bill, so it is designed to pass both the House and the Senate because it already has support from both Republicans and Democrats. Let me show you all the details in this bill. All right, as you can see here, this bill was released on September 15th, 2020. They're calling it the March to Common Ground, Bipartisan Stimulus Relief Framework. Having seen no progress on a new virus relief package in four months, and in recognition of Americans' increasing suffering, the Problem Solvers Caucus has developed a comprehensive bipartisan framework to meet the nation's need for the next 6 to 12 months that can pass both chambers of Congress and be signed into law by the President. Our objective is to inspire negotiators to return to the table. The framework was developed by a PSC working group that spent six weeks listening to constituents throughout the country and was developed through robust debate, deliberation, and conversation among caucus members and key stakeholders. The framework has been approved for endorsement by over 75% of the PSC membership consisting of 25 House Democrats and 25 House Republicans. The PSC, or Problem Solvers Caucus, is committed to demonstrating cooperative, bipartisan leadership, which means both Republican and Democrat, at the time our country needs it the most. 
Okay, first up is $100 billion for testing and health care. The virus continues to spread through the country, reducing transmission through rapid and reliable testing and tracing, and ensuring quality treatment for all those affected must be our foremost priority to limit human and economic suffering and get our country back on the road. The solution for this is $25 billion for testing and contact tracing, $30 billion for healthcare provider support, including but not limited to telehealth expansion, $45 billion for forgiveness of Medicare loans to providers, not to reduce the Medicare trust fund. That's an interesting forgiveness of Medicare loans to providers. We will have to get more in detail information on that going forward. Next up is support for individuals and families to the tune of $316 billion. Because of the virus, fixed costs for individuals and families are often exceeding the ability to pay for food, rent, loan, and other necessities. The solution to this is a 15% WIC, which is the Women, Infants, and Children's Program of 15% plus up through March of 2021. That is $1 billion. So it would be 15% more if you receive WIC, you would receive 15% more benefits there. And also 15% more through the SNAP program, which helps Americans get food. And that would be 15% more also to the tune of $10 billion. And $1,200 direct stimulus checks, $500 per child, and dependent adults also. And in parentheses here, retroactive to the tune of $280 billion. Now, as you've seen here, it looks like they would probably be using the same qualifications from the first stimulus check. So $1,200 to adults, $500 to children, and it looks like they're trying to pass $500 to all dependents, including adult dependents this time around. Those are basically people that are claimed as a dependent on somebody's tax return, but yet they're an adult. So this time around, it looks like if this goes through with this wording, that you would receive a stimulus check if you were an adult dependent on somebody's tax return. If you're on Social Security, SSDI, Railroad Benefits, you should be receiving a check this time around, especially if you received a check the, the last time around. The only really reason maybe you wouldn't is if you made over the income qualifications, which will probably be the $99,000 per year. It starts at $75,000 and goes up to $99,000. At $75,000, you start to get a little bit less in your stimulus check. So Social Security, SSDI, Railroad Benefits should be receiving a check this time around, just like last time. We don't know about child support yet. Um, from the first stimulus package, first stimulus check, if you owed child support, you likely didn't receive your check. They've been talking about getting rid of that for the second one this time around. We don't know the details of that yet. I will keep you uh, informed as we get more details. I have several more things to go through in this package, so let's get right into them. The next one, and this is a big one, rental assistance for the most needy and other rent stabilization programs and or eviction moratorium through January 2021, $25 billion they want to spend in this program. And again, we don't know the details of this one yet either, but it looks like they want to do $25 billion for rent and mortgage assistance for people who basically can't afford rent right now. So if this goes through as worded, you actually might receive additional checks from the government to pay for your rent or your mortgage if you are in trouble. And I don't know how we'll prove that. You may have to you know, fill out a form, send it to the government and be under maybe an, a certain income qualification, but you actually might receive an additional check to help you pay your rent during this pandemic, probably until the end of the year. Next up is student loan forbearance through the end of the year, December 31st, 2020. Next up is an extension of the unemployment assistance or unemployment extension bonus money. This virus has caused significant damage to the U.S. and the world economy, resulting in layoffs, 
furloughs, and an impediment to returning to work. Americans who have been displaced from their jobs due to this virus need federal support to pay their bills and put food on the table for their families until they can get back to work. It's important to provide such support without a corresponding economic incentive to remain unemployed. The solution for this would be $450 per week for an eight-week transition period. So this would be probably eight weeks before the end of the year, probably starting as soon as they can pass this bill. This is a compromise. The Republicans want $300 per week and the Democrats want $600 per week. So you notice this falls directly in the middle of that. Followed after that eight-week transition period would be up to $600 per week and up to but not exceeding 100% of previous wages. That would be for five weeks. This would be a total of 13 weeks from mid-October 2020 through January 2021. So this would extend the unemployment or the federal unemployment boost money, the unemployment extension money. This would be $450 per week for eight weeks, and then an additional money for the tune of five weeks that can be up to $600. So this would be 13 more weeks of unemployment extension money to people that have lost their jobs during this pandemic. That's also really good news because a lot of people have lost their job from this pandemic. At last count, we had 29.2 million people still receiving unemployment benefits because a lot of industries such as restaurants, the cruise lines, the airlines, anything travel related is still very, very hard hit. And we're still seeing businesses go out of business almost every single day. Small businesses being hit the hardest with a lot of small businesses being down by 25 to 50%. And we're seeing a record number of small businesses going out of business. Next up would be help for those small businesses and nonprofits. Most small businesses who receive PPP loans, which is Paycheck Protection Loans, have exhausted those resources. And many of them and their millions of employees are hanging in the balance. Furthermore, many small businesses in distressed communities and owned by entrepreneurs of color were unable to obtain loans through the original program. This would include $240 billion for the Paycheck Protection Program. This is a second loan. It has flexible use, full transparency, simplified forgiveness, and prioritized distressed businesses. And there's $145 billion remaining from the PPP loan the first time to be reappropriated, and $95 billion in new money to also go to this program, and $50 billion for targeted employee retention tax credit, also known as the ERTC program, and this will rectify the Main Street lending program also. $145 billion for schools and child care. All schools, colleges, and universities, whether reopening or conducting remote or hybrid learning, are in need of resources to protect the health of students, teachers, staff, visitors, and to ensure access to the equipment necessary for effective teaching. Child care providers have been especially hard hit by the impact of this virus and are in need of support to stay open and ensure that parents returning to their jobs have access to care for their children. This would include $15 billion for child care providers, flexible and immediate, $10 billion for provider relief, and $5 billion for the child care development block grants and also $100 billion for schools kindergarten through 12, whether it's virtual, hybrid, or for in-person learning, and $30 billion for higher education institutions. $500 billion for state and local aids. This is mostly what the Democrats want. The Democrats want actually almost a trillion dollars. So this is, meets them about halfway be between what the Republicans and the Democrats want. $130 billion remaining from the first stimulus package, the CARES Act, to be used for flexible use and documented through past state and local virus expenses. 
$130 billion in new money for documented future state and local virus expenses, $120 billion in new money for documented local government revenue shortfalls, $250 billion in new money for state general revenue shortfalls, and tribal and territorial government allocation. We also have $400 million for election aid, and we also have $52 billion for broadband, all agriculture, the United States Postal Service, and the census, of which $12 billion goes for broadband and hotspots to underserved communities, $25 billion for agriculture and aquaculture producers and processors, $15 billion for the post office also. It will also include worker and liability protection from the virus. This virus has created the need to ensure workers, customers, and students are protected from the transmission and businesses, schools, and institutions are protected from frivolous lawsuit. This will provide more liability protection and worker safety programs for those people. We also have some automatic boosters or reducers where they can spend more or less money in certain areas. For example, boosters to the tune of more than $400 billion could be used for an automatic three-month unemployment insurance extension in February 2021 if warranted based on metrics. That would be $120 billion. So this bill could provide an even more unemployment insurance extension to February 2021. And automatic stimulus checks in March 2021 if warranted based on the metrics, and that would include a second stimulus check if metrics based on how the virus is doing would be sent out again in March 2021. So that is really good news because basically this bill is saying if the virus continues and is still doing bad when January hits and next year comes around, that this would provide a third stimulus check to you guys and another round of unemployment extension. Can we possibly get better news than this? I mean, literally this bill has a second and a third stimulus check. Thank you. And another round of unemployment extension next year if this virus continues and hits certain thresholds. This bill is awesome. I mean... Not only is it produced by both the Republicans and the Democrats, so they already have support from both sides, and they're actually already in Congress, they're already from the House of Representatives, but they're literally giving us a second and a third stimulus check and two more rounds of unemployment extension and more money for small businesses and small business employees. This is the best news we've had all month. I mean, this is absolutely just amazing news. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. This is honestly just amazing news. So let me know your thoughts and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on new videos as they come out, what the details are going to be on this, what, what they're saying in Congress about this, when we could receive the checks. So make sure you're subscribed. You can click the bell icon if you want to be notified when I go live. Typically go live at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and sometimes at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget to hit the like button for us down below if you haven't yet. And you can click on these videos to watch my newest stimulus check videos next. And this video teaches you how to start a business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have students that have replaced their entire 9 to 5 income, and I teach people how to do that. Thanks, guys. Click on one of those videos to watch them next, and I will see you in the next video.